Alex Hansery here, January 24th, 2016, here to talk about the good and bad regarding living off the grid. Make sure you have enough power if you need it. And it really takes some time to gather the experience to figure out what devices might be worth investing in, electronics, battery banks, and there is like a variety of things to look at. And my knowledge of battery banks is fairly limited, but I went from the deep cycle marine grade batteries to the golf cart batteries. And if you look, sometimes you can get a good deal on them. You might have to drive quite a distance, uh, but that's something that I've learned along the way. Uh, having 400 uh, watts of solar on top of the RV, for the most part, you know, it provides most of my power needs. My internet takes up 90 watts. Now, <clears throat> today, I'm discussing this video because due to short-sightedness and lack of planning, uh, but I can get away with it for a few days, so it's okay, live and learn, I find myself with a lot less power these days. We have a snowstorm underway due to improper maintenance, okay, live and learn, of the generator that I was using. It kicked the bucket a couple weeks ago. It's not necessarily related to the weather, uh, but rather maintenance. And so I have another one coming, and I'm only spending $100 on a 1,200-watt generator instead of spending a lot on something you know, much more extravagant because that will enable me to run my computers, uh, run my lights, uh, run the Internet, and other things. And so you know, the benefits of living off the grid is you can have a lot of your needs met from the power of the sun, granted that you have enough sun. You know, I'm in an environment that is actually one of the snowiest parts of Colorado. So we got a foot of snow, then we got another foot of snow, half foot of snow, and there's more snow coming in February. And there's actually a car that I just picked up in town for under a ground, uh, a grand, a four by four. It's a, a GMC Jimmy, 1990. And so it's great to have a great car that can get up and down the hill the thing is getting out of the driveway. So it's like certain things we don't think about till we actually make the mistake, but we learn from our mistakes. And as that I have a vlog where I talk about a lot of things, including off-grid living, uh, I think that, you know, it's prudent, it's proper uh, to discuss some of the specifics uh, regarding the challenges and the triumphs. Triumphs, again, more power than on a sunny day, especially in the spring, the summer, or the fall you know, to charge up all your computers and to charge up extra batteries. And essentially, you're getting enough sun to where if you have something to store that energy, now we're talking about batteries and outside the box of golf cart batteries, but maybe something a little bit more efficient. That's what I'm looking at in the future. I know there are people on Facebook that aren't living off grid that may see like a couple years ago, Alex, you got to get the Tesla battery. You know, it's like, do I really have to spend the money to get a Tesla battery? And so, you know, there's certain things that are marketed. There are certain things that are off-grid items, and they may cost thousands of thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, which I don't have. And if I did, it'd be getting towards, going towards getting the land paid off at a sooner date rather than 2020. So because I don't have thousands and thousands of dollars, when I have been able to buy batteries and things of that nature, I've been able to see how long they last. And... Um, with regards to power, how much power it gives me. And so two golf cart batteries, believe it or not, you know, when the sun goes down, that's not enough to run the internet or a modem for very long. So we start looking at battery backups. Um, I experimented with something recently and I got something called the APC 1500. It's sitting here under the desk. And so on a good day where that's charging, it'll charge over the course of eight hours. And it'll give you I'd say it's like uploading speed, you get a lot more if you're just surfing the internet. But uploading like a big file, my uploads to YouTube, they're not all big files, but you add all up, that's a lot of space, a lot of data. And so in that regard, and by the way, I'm on satellite with a special plan to where my data is limited during the day, it's unlimited during the night. And so if I'm going to be uploading at night and using a certain amount of energy, there needs to be stored up energy somewhere else if a generator isn't running. Now, like I said, I'm going to get a generator, but 
when it comes to being off grid and getting all that you can, if you will, from the um, available free energy tools, i.e. the sun, it really comes down to storing that power. Now, some would say, well, Alex, you need more than 400 watts of solar. And when you look at how efficient 400 watts actually is, it's really about where that energy is being stored. So I get to know how much energy each of my electronics takes. Uh, I think also about things that I may want to invest in, like an audio recorder or an MP3 player, external speakers, uh, things to entertain myself without using the computer itself. And a Mac, for example, and I have another computer over here charging, but it's not charging at the moment because we've got no sun. So moments like this, believe it or not, I'm not able to access the internet. Uh, I'm not able to charge my computers. Uh, I have to wait, though, till later in the day, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, we're already at like probably pushing 1030 right now. Normally, again, in other parts of the year, a lot more sun. And it really also gets you thinking about, wow, this energy is coming from the air. It's coming from the sky. But it's coming from the sky, transported through the air. It's interacting with the solar panels. You know, and the cord connects it all the way down, charge control on the inverter and that whole process and the batteries. And another cord right into the shed to a surge controller down there, a cheap one, with my attachments hooked up to it. And I don't have everything charging at once, but when the sun is out, everything can be charging at once. And it's like, then you see the power of, say, 400 watts. And by the way, the panels I got, I think they were about, I'm trying to think exactly how much they were each. I'm guessing around 200, maybe 250. And so the reality of the situation is, there's something magical about getting this level of free energy. Other people are interested in things that are more high tech. I think technology has surpassed our humanity in a lot of different ways. And a lot of that technology already exists. It's a matter of just having access to it. But we're, with regards to the sun and being able to use something like the sun as a power source to live off the grid, even if there are challenges. Mind you, there are people that have far less energy needs than I, that aren't working from home per se, doing YouTube videos and running someone's website and doing other things. So that's a unique lifestyle. And so even though it seems complicated, it's not impossible. And even though I have these little hiccups like right now where I have this moment where I'm like, really? Blue sky, nope, nope, gray, ooh, dark gray, ooh, a little bit, oh, blue sky, sun break, and then back to gray. So yes, something like a generator can be really useful and needed if you need to be online. But if you don't need to be online, and it's just basic power for basic things. And as battery technology advances, there's the dark side of the lithium batteries and Afghanistan and things of that nature. Lithium and other minerals being mined in conflict countries. Uh, but there are other batteries, acid-based batteries, and perhaps future technologies uh, may, um, may offer us um, something even more efficient. I'm also open you know, to your perspective on really efficient battery banks and charging and things of that nature. In the future, I would like to be able to show you by example, and maybe we'll have to you know, recruit a friend, set it up, get the materials, but get that bike mechanism, you get a bike frame, you have a belt, and I believe it's hooked up to an alternator, hooked up to a battery, okay? So, or, or it is functioning as an alternator or there's alternator parts. It's been a while since I've looked at those videos I'm certainly not a know-it-all, but something like that would be really useful in a situation like right now, I'm sitting here in the dead of winter and the, the worst is yet to come with regards to the snow. But as I said, there's something magical about being snowed in and contemplating certain things. Uh, if only the people really understood the power of the sun, in my concluding thoughts here, because it's more than just power for our electronics. It connects to us, life force, you know, the you know, sun rises, we get up, the sun sets, we go to sleep. And the solar cycles, which I get into in other videos, have amazing influences over behavior and human trends. Whether you see those trends as positive trends or negative trends, whether you see people evolving or devolving, it seems like people go back and forth with the solar cycle. 
And that's really, really interesting because, like I said, people rise with the sun most of the time. And uh, then, of course, people go to sleep when the sun goes down. Without the sun rising every day, the light of our day, Love by the Sun by Tangerine Dream, waiting, waiting, waiting for the sun, waiting, waiting, waiting for the sun. I mean, that, that literally has become like the mantra of these, um, these dark winter days that I'm in. So I just want to do a uh, pause between all the news and commentary on other things to talk about my gratitude for the sun and how I think we should continue to explore the sun, solar panel applications, solar power applications, but as well as understanding the sun's in fact impact on our planet, our world, our behavior, and so many other things. Solar power is obviously something that is a big, big deal on our planet now. The thing is, a lot of people, instead of getting involved in it themselves, they're just you know assuming the corporations may work us onto a more sustainable grid or something like that. Uh, in reality, they're gobbling up resources. People, you know, sell their solar energy in some cases back to the grid and they get a check for it. I'm talking more with regards to getting out of the system, getting out of the grid and using the sun to give you the basic things that you need to take this a step farther with the advance in battery banks and uh, being able to store the power of the sun, of which I'm at a very primitive level of. But if we can expand that, or if someone had the financial means, you know, to be able to be running, say, a um, an outdoor greenhouse, or indoor greenhouse, rather, in the winter, because it's being powered by lights, powered by the sun and that energy being held in the batteries and maybe with something like a Mr. Buddy heater or, or something to that effect. I don't know. Maybe there are even certain kinds of stoves that would be appropriate, but using the power of the sun, if you're in an area that gets enough and growing year round and, or using lights and believe it or not, it's, it's amazing how some people have advanced a level where they're actually growing weed over the course of the winter. And so that's going to take a certain amount of power. And that's going to take a certain amount of uh, uh, solar and or battery. So all this is really, really interesting stuff as far as I'm concerned. I have a new vehicle and it has a little, um, one of those little cigarette lighters. How many of you have gone on a road trip with, um, you know, easy to use plug-in things to charge your devices or to charge, say, another battery bank in case you need to run the computer without having to plug your computer into the grid. So a lot of this now is just innovation, imagination, creativity, research, because the technologies that are out there, whether it be plug-in items or solar power or the uh, solar panel backpack or the various types of batteries, these technologies can enable us to live in freedom outside the grid. The naysayers are going to say you're not really off the grid if we're using technology. And what they're doing, what they're doing, and they said to you and to me is to make excuses for why they are choosing to remain in uh, on schedule at their regular jobs, paying their rent for something they won't even own. You'll you'll notice the pessimism and that type of talk. Well, you're not off grid if you have access to satellite technology. Yes, I am. And the internet, the dish, connects with space. It doesn't connect with anything here on the grid. That's where the internet is coming from. So in that case, yes, the internet is literally off-grid, yet using power, solar power and other things to literally connect with the skies. And it's also from the skies in which the power comes to run everything to begin with. So if you really look at things, it's not really just about getting power for your computers and something of that. It's almost something spiritual. It is something spiritual. It should get us to think a little bit more deeply about of the light of this world. And how it blesses us. And how it provides for us. And how, like so many other things, people take it for granted. And that's one thing that I have not done. The sun, in a literal sense, becomes the focus of the off-gridder. You add in some spiritual insight and other bits of wisdom, and it's a very amazing experience. 
and my pondering of the sun and all that it entails, not just power to run my electronics today as I hope to see a sunbreak, it means something so much more than what we think of it. I'm Alex Ansari signing off on this sunless day, waiting for the sun, January 24th, 2017. That's where we're at now.